I think that I, the advice is the advice that everyone gives is, you know, do it consistently, try out lots of instructors and see who fits for you. I think this year I've, I've taken quite a lot of rides. And so this year I'm going to kind of branch out and maybe once or twice a week, try someone different. You know, I don't usually ride with the UK people or the Germany people and maybe start doing rides with them. Um, and, you know, because you get into a rut mm-hmm. and sure. um, it, it's not a horrible rut, but it's, it's always nice to branch out and kind of see what else is out there. I did a Christine ride the other day that I absolutely love. She did a pop ride and she was like, I never do pop rides. I saw but that. Here it is. And it, it was great. And so it's always good to, to branch out and see what else is out there. It's more than just your output. Welcome to the Clip Out Podcast, episode 201. This is Crystal O'Keefe. And this is Tom O'Keefe. Yeah, if you call it 201, it sounds like we're some sort of college course. <laughs> it might be 202 next week, though. We'll see. Okay. I haven't decided. You're like, no guarantees. Might be 202. It's the 100 argument all over again. Yes. I got to readjust. Oh, goodness. Not adjustments. <laughs> so, uh, as you can tell, for the people that are watching us on YouTube... Uh, YouTube.com slash the clip out. Um, we're back at home. We're back at home. We don't have our fancy uh, fake backgrounds. Fake on. backgrounds <laughs> where you were on a beach and I was looking under at the, the northern lights. Under the northern lights. <laughs> Someone was like, Crystal got the better location. And I was like, Northern lights, that's a once in a lifetime trip. You can go to the beach any old time. So I don't know. I will just say it was warm where I was and it felt great. <laughs> and I'm wearing a sweatshirt right now. <laughs> And last week I was not. We just didn't want anyone <laughs> to see our dirty hotel room. That's dirty with one R. <laughs> as far as you know. Uh, but seriously, thank you guys. Yes. The community. Oh my God. All of the love from everybody. It was very flattering. So sweet. Yes. Uh, and I think my favorite part was all of our, especially the OG crowd, yeah. posting all of their I was episode so and so. I was kind episode so and so. match over whose number was lower. <laughs> <laughs> oh. If only we had known, we could have auctioned off those interviews, of course, before we. <laughs> Before we did that, <laughs> no one cared. Exactly. So it's, you know. Exactly. Uh, it has been so much fun reminiscing over the, especially that homecoming, you know, because we would go up to people and be like, yeah. we're starting a podcast. And they'd be Do like, you want to be on it? They're like, what? <laughs> okay. Sure. Sure. People just said yes. They didn't know what they were yeah. saying yes to. They're like, okay, sure you are. <laughs> Oh, it does That's, my heart good to it think was a, about all of it. It was a combination of like, yeah, yeah, sure, you're starting a podcast, <laughs> and um, and the look that just said. Well, that's an awful idea. And also, for some, <laughs> what's a podcast? Yeah, there was that. <laughs> there was a lot of like, well, that sounds horrible, but okay. If that's what you want to do with your time. We won't uh, stop it. But uh, if you haven't had a chance to check out the YouTube version, I highly recommend that you do. Yeah. Definitely. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, I just had a great time. I'm yeah. really glad that we got to be off last week to really enjoy uh, taking in all yeah. the all the comments and stuff that people sent. Yeah, we had spotty Wi-Fi, so I didn't get to answer everybody, but it yeah. was really nice. So uh, I guess enough of that. Now Fine. we look forward. Fine. Look, for, it's the we're like a shark we have to constantly be moving. Keep moving forward. Yes. So um, what? Uh, what do you have in store for people this week? Well, uh, John Mills is back this week. We've got some great updates to discuss. Cannot awesome. wait to get into that. Uh, there's a little lawsuit that we got to get back yeah, to. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, and uh, we're going to have a whole bunch of updates, including talking about our brand new Peloton instructor and uh, new hires that Peloton has done. And of course, there's about a billion things going on with the instructors. We've got to hit as many of those as we can. Probably not all billion. Okay, let's okay. keep it to like half a billion. That's what I was thinking. Three quarters of a billion if we're making good time. Yeah, we'll see. 
So before we get to all that shameless plugs, don't forget we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find your podcasts, you can find us while you're there. Be sure and follow us so you never miss an episode. And if you would be so kind as to uh, leave us a review. Yes, please. That's always helpful. This one, we have one, Yay! is from Kelly Giggler. Oh, Kelly Backus. Okay. She's our interview next week. We didn't time it this way. Oh, how about that? <laughs> Wait, maybe it's two weeks. I don't know. It's coming up, though. It's coming up. It's coming up. And uh, she says, much like my discovery and instant subscription to the Peloton app and then bike four years ago, I have listened to every episode of this wonderful podcast since happening upon it a year ago. Tom and Crystal's connection with one another, as well as the content, Aww. is fun and easy to digest and full of interesting information. I love the guests as well as the weekly check-ins with other knowledgeable Pelotonians talking about you, John Mills. That's what she says. That's her talking. That's yeah. I, and so many others appreciate all the effort and hard work you put into this podcast. Crystal and Tom, keep them coming. See you just crystal on the leaderboard. (laughs) Oh, I love Kelly and her cat. Oh my God. So funny. I love her. She's great. Best then, Christmas card giver in the world. And then, yeah, the <laughs> card was great. And then she also says uh, her leaderboard name won't back us down. I love her leaderboard name. And she says, by the way, even my 69 year old dad does meditation and standing yoga. Aww. And then says, come on, Tom. Um, she's so, got a point. Yeah. So maybe when I'm 69. Oh, we got you doing tonal. Yeah. Meditation's Baby easier steps. than tonal. Baby steps. Okay. So um, also don't forget uh, our aforementioned YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the clip out. And you can uh, watch these shows and sometimes there's visual elements and that's fun. While you're there, subscribe to that. And of course, hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com slash the clip out. While you're there, like the page, join the group and sign up for the newsletter at the clip Oh, one more thing. If you want, share an episode in your Facebook feed, Twitter feed, Instagram, whatever, just to let people know that uh, we're worth checking out. Because if you like Peloton, you probably have friends that do too. So there's all of that. Let's dig in, shall we? We shall. Run, lift, and live with John Mills. So joining us today via the magic of Zoom 2 once again is John Mills. Hey, John, how's it going? What is going on? Episode 201. Woo! We didn't get to talk to you last week, but you still were represented yes, in episode 200. Yes. Oh my God, that with a, parody. With a wonderful parody <laughs> video. Thank you. It's quite the honor. Well, congrats. It is, it is quite the honor. Yeah. Uh, Tom asked know, me, though, absolutely. why you chose not to have a beard for him. Oh. <laughs> I had a okay. Okay, I have a lot of prop hair, yeah, right? Yeah. And I had like one that was, you know, like the full yeah. Um, goatee, yeah. But it was a little too thick, and <laughs> and it was kind of weird. So then I started trying to trim it, and then I screwed it all up trying to trim it, and then I was left with just the mustache part, and it was just a whole mess. So it I wasn't that, that noticeable. No, it and wasn't. honestly, I was like, he, don't he ask me. He's gonna me. think I'm like of no. all the thing. I'm I'm bitching about that, and, and I was, he wasn't bitching. And I was honestly like, I think what it is is because like the bottom part's pretty gray like he might not know that i have one it just blends in to my irish paint. No, i knew it was there I, I screwed it up trimming i was sitting there trimming and then i was trying to do uh uh Chelsea? Uh, Chelsea Jackson Roberts hair and I screwed that up. Erica had to help me. <laughs> you did so well. And um and I loved your outtakes whenever you were doing uh Dr. Roberts, Dr. Chelsea Jackson Roberts. Yeah. Uh you did your outtake video. Oh my god, that was so funny. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Tom I got does. a lot more outtakes. There's more of those coming. <laughs> Deleted scenes. People love them. Same yeah, for the Blu-ray. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and if people want to see that, they should go to your Facebook group over at Run Left Live. There's a shameless plug for you. Yes. So. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and if anyone hasn't heard, Dr. Jen loved it, even her head exploding. She yes. thought it was amazing. She did think it was amazing. <laughs> I was nervous about that. Like, that's not right to have people's heads just spontaneously exploding on camera she's so I nice had, yeah she's so nice and down to earth like you don't you don't have to worry about that type of thing i know she presents a very professional image and she is very and professional, she is very professional but she can also be a down-to-earth normal person too. yes she can <laughs> oh she was really cool yeah she worked we reached out to me and we we uh, chatted back and forth she was really kind so that oh, was that's cool. awesome yay peloton in court so there was an update this week uh, in the world of Peloton lawsuits. I think this is my favorite story all week. This is a good one. <laughs> this is a good one. Oh, man. 
Eric, Eric Villain. Villain C. Yeah. He oh, has yeah. villain in his name. He right? does. He does. I'm surprised he doesn't have like like a handlebar mustache. <laughs> Look tutorial. at that picture that John found of him. He does too. Even I mean, it's not really on looks there. Like he's just about to like tie some person to some train tracks or something. I think in his coat closet, he's got a coat made of Dalmatians. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I hate to say it because he would probably hear it as a compliment, but he looks like a Bond villain. He, he le- does. He legit <laughs> looks like he's teaming up with Spectre in this photo. Yeah, he, he should go into film or something. Uh, they okay. would buy it. <laughs> well, so uh, he he had he had a company called a Villainy Design Group, and Peloton hired them back in the day. I don't know what year, 2012, 13, at some point, to design the bike. And right. and his company designed it. And while they were designing it, they discovered that Microsoft held a patent for something relative to his design. So he finishes the design, but immediately then starts a new company called VR Optics which then held that patent and then tried to turn around and sue Peloton for the bike he designed for them. <laughs> oh my, my, Unbelievable. Wow. He's just a big old <laughs> jerk. Now, isn't this the same guy that um, he's a big alleged jerk? Let me say that. I don't need him coming after me. And allegedly. Me. He's I don't allegedly think allegedly a I jerk. I think you're OK to call somebody a jerk. OK. It's when it's something that's. That's opinion based. Right? Okay. Yeah. Well, well, then, but isn't this the same guy that like went and designed like all the others? Isn't he involved with Echelon and and like he sold yeah. them the yeah. design and all this this other stuff too? This just behind the scenes shadiness that happens. So like there, yeah, I'm just saying Echelon is knowingly involved with this guy after he sued Peloton, and people are like, "Why are you always picking on Echelon? This is why. This yeah. is why <laughs> Echelon is involved with this guy who who went after Peloton after they hired him to do a job. He did the job and then turned around and sued them yeah. for doing the job. Like that's not cool, right. man. That's not cool. So, they, so yeah, Echelon hires him. Uh, I think when you read the the um, press release, I think they hired him specifically because of some of those patents that he held. Oh, I right? have no doubt. Um, right. And so ultimately, though, in the end, that that case against Peloton fell apart in, I think, in April of last year. Peloton won the case, basically saying, you know, you your first company should have defended Peloton against your second company. <laughs> and since they didn't, we're just going to invalidate the whole patent. Now there's no patent. Good for them. Right. So the court says invalidate the patent. And that's when uh, Peloton turned around and asked for uh, damages. And that's what we just learned yesterday, that they awarded them $4.3 million, um, in attorney's fees and another $1.2 million in interest. Which has me thinking, is Eric Villancy somewhere going, $5 million? $5 million? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was just here thinking, like, that's, not a, that's nothing to Peloton, but it's probably a lot of money. But so many of these things, you don't ever get the paid the money, sure, right? Like, so, like, right. Will, you know, will he ever yeah. even pay up? Seems will they, doubtful. I, I agree, but so, it doesn't matter. They had it, it, it's the point, and it's the point that Peloton right. won. So, my question is, what right. does this mean for Echelon? So, I mean, you Good know, we've question. said for a long time that Echelon just seems like pretty much a ripoff of the, of Peloton, and that I think that they were kind of hanging their hat on the fact that they hired this guy and his his company owned the patents and they licensed it through them. So does that mean Pelot- Peloton can go after Echelon? Or since they voided the patent, does that mean like anybody can make a bike that looks like a Peloton now? Well, I thought all that of is- the Echelon stuff had been settled except for one claim yeah, okay. now. I, I think so there's only one claim around. out there that Peloton has against Echelon still. Everything else has been dropped, right? The counter lawsuit from Echelon was dropped. Right. Peloton's original lawsuit towards Echelon was dropped with the exception of one aspect of it. I don't remember exactly what it was because I'm sure it's about a specific piece of this. Gotcha. This technology. My, and I hear you. Like, yeah, I don't I don't know that it does. Maybe it opens them up for something, another case to come open. Like, I don't know. But what strikes me interesting, well, I always find the humor in these things. What strikes me interesting is... He had a patent. Like, had he just not tried to sue them, like, he now there's nobody has it. Yeah, now nobody has it. You're right. Yeah. You're right. That is a lot of irony. I didn't think about that. Yeah. 
I love it. I do too. I, I feel it. like he got what he deserved. Sometimes the good guys win. Yeah. And Peloton won, yeah. and I'm very happy that they did. It's it's rare that you get justice from the court system. <laughs> Even rarer that you get poetic justice. Yeah. Yeah, that is. True. I find it also interesting that Microsoft was like, "Yeah, you, yeah, I will sell it to you. <laughs> Take it." They, like, probably they obviously like, weren't all that. I mean, at that time, probably nobody was all into connected fitness. Right? They, they didn't yeah. even know what to do with it back then. It wasn't like, even whatever, a thing. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that is funny that they didn't even recognize the value of what they had. Right. It is. That's it is very telling how the world has changed in a few years. <laughs> yeah. And so then uh, in other news, you came across from what Inc. Magazine discovered, I guess, a, a, a leaked marketing deck from Peloton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm already laughing. Well, anyway, this, <laughs> it, this isn't really news. Like like you said, Crystal, like this has been out since like December of 2019. But um, so Inc. just decided to you know talk about it now. And I never really dug into the details of it. So when this uh, deck was re- leaked or released or whatever, back in December of 2019, um, since then, there are a lot of marketing sites that use it as a template. Like you can find it in a lot of marketing sites now. So it's kind of easy to find, but I read through it because Inc. Magazine decided to post it. Now what I found interesting, interesting about it. And it talks through like how Peloton wants to be perceived, you know, what their demographic is they're trying to hit, you know, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the income of the households that they're trying to market to. And it uses these terms of who they are and who they aren't. And so that was what was interesting to me. I thought it would like, you know, have people have a discussion in my group, specifically when they said, when they say, describe themselves and who they are, they say they're uh, street wise. <laughs> and I was like, who are they? Like Starsky and Hutch? I know, right? Like, what? Okay, it's funny because my interpretation of that was that it's like <laughs> people who, you know, can like make a quick deduction of the situation. Yeah. That's, that's how okay. I took it. That's how but, I took it. Yes, yeah, you like, of all, maybe since I thought they were talking about me, I just chose to look at it positively. Of all the <laughs> words on there, that's the one that I thought was the most odd was street wise. Because I think a street wise is like, like, oh, I, I, I don't got the book learning, but I, <laughs> right. but I know right. how to figure things out. And, and but I, but I don't think I, of of Peloton like that. I, but it also says highly educated, <laughs> so I don't think that's what they're going for. Yeah, I don't so think like, that's what right, that was right. their intention. To me, streetwise and highly educated are different things. Right. It's different that's ways what to I be. Thought too. Those are different ways to be smart. But you, but you really typically are going to be one or the other yeah i i don't know what they meant but i i think that this is a great example of like it's funny to look at the evolution of a company because they were sitting around brainstorming this i have no doubt and then this is being covered in a news article two years (laughs) later like they probably did not expect to have it picked apart at that level it was (laughs) an internal document you know um and so i i think that i think that your comments are all very fair and i think it's funny that like they've evolved so much that that they probably wouldn't use these terms today like they probably right. and, have and, a different and, set of terms right and then the, and the, and the deck you could tell it kind of looks like it's rough around the edges maybe they weren't done with it or <laughs> and you kind of get that impression so it wasn't really it was finished. but it's kind of comical reading it some of the folks in my group you know they're laughing they're like hold up I'm between 35 and 50 and I, that's how much money I make. And I have that number of kids. They know me too well. This yeah. is scary. <laughs> <laughs> They're good like that. They are. I, I, like, mean, the, good. I like the really things good. that you're not supposed to say. In yeah. Relation to them. Like, and you can tell what they don't like. Yeah. Preachy, a fad. Right. I like that they like right. premium, but not exclusive. Which right. which John pointed right. out, premium. he did not like that. <laughs> he was like, they're right. the same now, thing. <laughs> I, I was like, doesn't that ultimately kind of manifest itself out to be the same thing? I mean, I know they're different from a definition perspective, but doesn't it kind of end up being the same thing i mean it can but i i think exclusive sounds exclusionary yeah so it sounds right. like it's for me not for you right where premium right. is more like it, this is next level quality or next, next level, level goodness as opposed to like this is mine and you can't have it yeah right. and, and i think right. i think that is an important distinction because peloton works so hard to be inclusive yeah that i right. think i think that that is a fair distinction to make but but i get what right. you're saying too John. i also think it's funny that on this list is goofy like <laughs> yeah. has, right. i like i've i've never thought of 
I don't even know. Like a they're lot of instructors. That I know that's what they're okay, referring to. They're yeah, instructors. I guess. I get. I okay. Right. And when nobody describing them as goofy. No. Yeah. No. You want, want to be taken seriously. No. It, but it is funny because so, so many of these things they they do get tagged with. They do a lot. <laughs> they, cultish and religion and over you know. the top. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and fad and 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 wrongly. Right. But, yeah. Yeah. Right. But they do. I mean, they do get it. I feel like I feel right. like cultish is. I, I get why they don't like that term. Sure. But but like it. It's a cult. It's out there, <laughs> and they know it, but they don't want to steer into it either. Yeah, and they I, shouldn't. Which I get. They shouldn't. I remember when I was in radio. Whenever we would do, I worked at a at a rock station, so we would do a lot of remotes, at like at like White Castles, <laughs> and and they would they would literally give you. Oh a, yeah, you told me about a this list of things you couldn't call the hamburgers. There were like twenty things, and so like. You couldn't call them belly bombers or sliders or like all they had all these oh, things. All the you, things that everyone calls them. Right. All the things everyone <laughs> calls them. You couldn't use any of those things. Yeah. You couldn't you couldn't do any of them. You couldn't call them any of them. And it's funny, like since then they've backed off because I heard a White Castle commercial a while back and somebody said slider and I was like, What? You can't like <laughs> but so they but at the time they were very adamant of like you do You can't not, do that. You don't call it these things. Like if you were at a six flags, they'd they'd be like Okay, talk about how fun the roller coaster is, but don't talk about how you almost threw up and don't talk about how, you right. know, you got whiplash or whatever. They had all these things, that, you know, so it's like <laughs> it's just funny to see Peloton's version of belly it bombers. Is. And I would also be curious to see now that we're so far down the road, like what and they have a new marketing person, right? Dara, Dara. Right. Um, I would love to see. Right. I would love to see what the, this list looks like now, because we know right. that the fastest growing demographic is now a younger generation. Yeah, it's it's no longer 35 to 50. It's actually like 23 to 40 is the fastest growing right. demographic. So that's um, right. It's changed. It has. So I would be curious to see what other things I would love to compare a side by side. Peloton, if you're listening, we we would love to compare and nitpick. <laughs> I'm sure right. they'll send it yes. right over. <laughs> Sounds like something they would do. Please, please nitpick us. We love it. Just, here's another deck. Yeah. Compare and nitpick. <laughs> nitpick to your heart's content. Dig in. We love it. Um, I thought it was a fun. I thought it was a fun look back to go backwards, though. You know, and see it. I loved all of the the gifts and stuff after I posted that, you know, because I, I was going, hold up. I'm too old for the demographic. Now I'm outside of the demographic. And then people were like, me too. <laughs> right? but you weren't at the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I wasn't at the time. Yeah. Right. You've been it's... grandfathered in or should we say grandfather sharked in? <laughs> grandfather sharked in. That's right. <laughs> We got to get you another shirt. <laughs> I only have two. I need another one. You're right. <laughs> this one's got to say grandfathered shark tin. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Until next week, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me on Facebook in my Run, Lift, and Live group or page. They can find me on Instagram, Run, Lift, and Live, or at runliftandlive.com. New instructors. So the arguably worst kept secret this side of the rower, Bradley Rose was announced as the, your next Peloton instructor yeah, this week. True that. Or last yeah, week. Yeah, that's or, so was, funny. After was, Bob Tremor had posted that yeah. that he was going to be like at one point, Bradley Rose was just interacting with people like, yeah, I'm totally going to be the next instructor until Peloton was like, eh, eh yeah. stop it. That's not how it works, Bradley. <laughs> It's funny. The reason this wasn't in the last week's episode is because we recorded early because we were on vacation. We literally were, were. I was literally unplugging all the equipment in the hotel room, and she's like, "There's a new instructor, son of a bitch." <laughs> <laughs> we almost recorded an update and then we and were like, Yeah, we're on yeah. vacation. <laughs> People we, have known this guy's gonna be out there for for months now. So oh, it's very exciting to have a new instructor though. Uh Bradley Rose is gonna be teaching out of the UK studio. He's going to be the cycling instructor. And um well he is not going to be. And uh he did his premiere ride. Uh my understanding is it was something like thirteen thousand people on it's so fascinating to see how as peloton keeps growing and they do these live instructor premiere rides 
how many people join. And uh, so he is all settling in. Uh, th- I understanding is he was pretty nervous, but he had it down by the next time he took a ride. So I think he was just a little nervous coming out of the gate, which uh, is understandable. Yeah, everybody's nervous their first time. Absolutely. That's that's a lot of pressure to know all those people are on there. And when you see a number that big, you look down, you're like, oh, my God, all those people are there for me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's a, that's a lot. <laughs> Congrats to Bradley Rose. Absolutely. And then people are starting to theorize that Peloton might be launching its own fitness tracker. Yeah, we talked about Peloton's acquisitions that they had done and that it was a potential Mm -hmm. potentiality Um, but people are starting to kind of theorize what it's going to look like if you if you read the article from uh, DC Rainmaker which was last week and we didn't cover it because I thought I'd just cover these all at the same time um, he's leaning more toward oh it's going to be more of a whoop like device that's not going to have a screen it's going to give you things like your heart rate and recovery rate and things like that and they're they're going to purposely come out with something that does not compete with apple directly right that's dc rainmakers theory tech radar on the other hand is saying no we think that because they acquired atlas wearable they're going to actually take one of their wearables that they had and redo it for peloton it's going to be it's going to be focused on indoor um, classes that you can take and it's going to track all of the other things like it's going to track your reps and it's going to be able to show you what kind of workout you're doing as well as how well you did it yeah. and what your recovery also needs to be so this will be very interesting to see what they do end up doing with the wearable you know because it's all speculation at this point totally although i kind of think i i kind of like the idea better of it not having a screen of it being more like a whoop that it syncs and forces you to interact with with the app, you know, and then I would think that would give them more screen room to play with. And it kind of forces you into the app and interact there. And you can do more stuff while you're in the app than you could on a screen on your wrist. So, yes, but I think that Peloton users are traditionally Apple users. Now I'm talking about the core. I know we have a lot of new sure. newcomers to the Peloton community and, and they're not necessarily. But if you go back to the beginning of Peloton, they've been Apple. A disproportionate number. Like, like a very high. Crazy high. Like, like over 80 percent. Yes. Um, and, and those users tend to already have an Apple watch and they don't want something else on their wrist. Yeah. There are not a lot of people that are like me that are going to have an Apple watch on one hand and a whoop on the other but to that end Mm -hmm. i think you're more likely to get somebody with an apple watch to wear a second device that doesn't have a screen than to walk around looking like they got two watches on that's also true that's a very good point i don't know which it's going to be but it will be interesting um and and will it be something that needs to be worn all the time like the whoop is something that you need to wear all the time because it's constantly tracking where your stats are and that you want to have it on all the time to collect that data Whereas you could like other devices, like let's say a Garmin, it's it's a watch also, right? But it it's something that you could just wear when you're exercising to be able to track your GPS and your distance and things like that. Um, so it will be interesting to see what Peloton decides to do. Um, I don't know. And do they have something else planned? We can't even imagine. I I don't know. They could very well. Hmm. I don't know. And homecoming's coming up. So we know there's going to be some big announcements. What will be announced? We shall see. We shall. And if you guys aren't listening to Clubhouse, I'm moving Clubhouse up. Okay. I, is that okay? Sure. Editors, uh, put in a Clubhouse sweeper right now. The clip out on Clubhouse. There we go. Um, so so here's the thing. We talk about, so we get off on these topics, these tangents, just like this. Yeah. And there was some really interesting conversation about people's thought process about what what is coming up. And um, we can talk a little bit more about it when we get to the yoga studio being mm-hmm. closed. But I mean, you guys, there are people that are bringing information to the table that you would not hear otherwise let me just say that and it's not recorded so if you miss it you miss Miss it it. so um i i mean i know that it can be annoying since it's an apple only thing but i think that they're working really hard on the android it's only going to be a couple more months so anyway every sunday 4 p.m central 5 p.m eastern we get into some really deep peloton topics and uh, we'd love to see you there to hear your opinions as well absolutely 
Getting the Psychological Edge with Dr. Jen. So joining us today via the magic of Zoom Tube, Dr. Jen Mann, licensed marriage, family, and child therapist and sports psychology consultant. You may know her from VH1's Couples Therapy with Dr. Jen or VH1's Family Therapy with Dr. Jen. She also has a long-running radio show, The Dr. Jen Show, and she's written four best-selling books, including The Relationship Fix, Dr. Jen's Six-Step Guide to Improving Communication, Connection, and Intimacy. Dr. Jen, Hello. 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 So good to have you back again. My pleasure. Great uh, to be here. Well, thank you. Uh, let's see. We've been reaching out to the Clip Out community, asking them, what do you want to know from Dr. Jen? And our question this week is from Elizabeth Romine. Uh, Romaine. She wants to know how you deal with fear of missing out. There's so much content on Peloton. She wants to experience it all. She has a million classes bookmarked across all disciplines. How does she be happy with what she's chosen and not feel like she should have done a different class? I totally get this, first of all. <laughs> I, I think we've all felt this at some point. And I know that there are a lot of times where I will see someone post something on Instagram about a class they took. And I'm like, oh, I got to take that class. But then I encounter a different class and like it, it can really make your head spin. And these are good problems to have, obviously. that There's so much great content that it's hard to pick. I really believe in that, and this is kind of, it's going to sound kind of weird. It's like a spiritual belief when it comes to Peloton, (laughs) that I believe that we ultimately end up in the class that we're supposed to be in, and that there's usually something that we are meant to hear in the class that we're in, and that a lot of the time I find myself going, okay, you know, maybe I'm having a little bit of like Peloton remorse of like, oh, I pressed this for this class instead of this. But what I, the self-talk I do for myself is I'm here for a reason and I'm going to stick this out and I'm going to have an open heart and an open mind to hear whatever message I'm supposed to hear right now. Because as we know, our Peloton instructors are super inspirational and there's there's always something, some nugget of information, whether it is about your form or about your heart that ultimately we hear as we are working out, you know, and I, and I find with the yoga classes in particular is that a lot of the time I'll start a class and be like, oh, I wish I'd picked the one with that song in it. But I find that I'll be doing the yoga class and be like, you know what, my hips really needed this class. <laughs> like, oh, that's exactly the stretch that my body needed. So I think that we have to really kind of be open to the messages and the information and the body kind of things that are tended to in each class and kind of take the attitude of this is where I'm meant to be. And I do think that they're in the bigger picture, psychologically speaking, as a shrink, that we also have to look at where else does this extend to? Because how we do our life is kind of how we do our life. And, you know, Peloton can sometimes be a microcosm for how we function in the world. And if you're feeling that kind of FOMO at Peloton, are you feeling it elsewhere? Mm. And especially in a pandemic right now, we're missing out on a lot of things in our lives. Oh, yes. that there are a lot of activities and milestones and birthdays and you know school plays and graduations and theater and movies and family events that we are missing out on. And that sometimes we can project that feeling of I've feel like I'm missing out on these important things onto our workout or onto our spouse or onto other things. And so I think it's important to kind of check in and say like, okay, maybe this is just about Peloton, but also is it possible that it's not? Is it possible that this is just about kind of a bigger yearning for kind of missing things and feeling left out? And especially in this kind of weird time as some places are transitioning back and some places aren't and some people are vaccinated and some people aren't, that there may be a, a, some FOMO that are that's going on outside of Peloton that's worth looking at as well. Oh, super deep. I know. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of that as 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 the vaccines phase in, yeah. right? Like as you kind of get yeah. this two-tier society for a little bit where some people have it and some people don't. Yes. Yeah. Oh. 
so wise yeah. so wise yeah so she yeah. needs to look deeper she needs to see what else is going yeah. on there yeah okay and 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 also to kind of try to be a little more spiritual about it and kind of open to like maybe this is where i need to be and you know i can always take that other class and you know god willing she will be here for a very long time and get to take every class that she wants to take and you know sometimes it can also help you know if now we have the the scheduling option yes that kind of to schedule something but also to kind of be open to you know what maybe i've scheduled this but then i just learned about a really cool new ride that just really speaks to me and i think kind of have being a little flexible with that stuff is important Definitely. Got to learn to let go. You do. And and I find on the, I feel like when I work out, it's so important for me to take a class that speaks to me in that moment. Because if I don't, then I feel like, I feel like later I'll, I'll, I'll never feel like I had the best experience if I don't just go with my gut instinct. Like if somebody else pushes yeah. me to take a class and it's not what I want, then I feel like, oh, I should have taken the one I really wanted to take. That, that was what I should have done. So I think it's totally. Good. And, and, and I do think that like there's that moment where you're standing on the tread or sitting on the bike where you're like scrolling through and you're like, oh, do I do this one or this one? And I think that you do have to kind of listen to your gut and and you, you can always do the the other one tomorrow or next week. Like unless there's a purge. Oh, it's Tom. We <laughs> <laughs> started about the purge like. Oh my god! Like that's a whole and like I, I, I may need therapy about the purge. I know right? you you t- you like mess you like posted that day. You were like, oh my god! And, uh, like you know how I feel about anything with Billy Joel. Yes, and, like, and now it's gone. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, no, that's I, that was very traumatic. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 you you guys are gonna need to do some therapy on me about the purge. We're gonna we're gonna breathe through it, and yeah. we're gonna I'm, we're gonna I, I blocked it out the, the, you know, okay. like they say grief and loss denial anger bargaining depression acceptance i'm in denial okay I, i'm pretending it never happened okay <laughs> okay well i'm hopeful there will be a new one replacing it yeah. someday that's that's going to be I my hope. hope. So. I hope so. Yeah, I got I got to talk to Jen Sherman. Yes, yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, until next time, where can people find you? People can find me on Instagram and all social media, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, everything at Dr. Jen Man. Two ends on Jen, two ends on Man, and of course, every week in Style Magazine, my column Hump Day with Dr. Jen. Peloton. Now hiring. Guess anyone that says now hired. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Peloton <laughs> uh, picked up for Australia a former Spotify. I'm assuming MDV means music director. Managing director. Oh, OK. Sorry. Radio guy. Close kicked enough. In. Yeah. And Slingshot CEO as their first ever Australian country manager yeah so she's going to be uh reporting up through um kevin cornelius who is over all of peloton's international division okay and uh it's going to be karen lawson and uh, i'm not sure you know is country manager a term that is used only in australia i don't know yeah, that or if this is a new thing that they're going to have for each country right yeah right i don't know the answer to that um but i think it is very exciting that they have this this woman who is coming from all these other great companies that they're going to have in charge of all this growth in australia and i can't wait to see what what they do and what what all are they going to do are they going to have as we've talked about before are they going to have studios there are they going to be using a studio somewhere else we got into a really deep clubhouse conversation about this as well um, a lot of people had some really good thoughts on this and some people even really think strongly that there could actually be a a west coast studio you know out of america and that they could broadcast there i i still don't think that's going to happen but at any rate the point being it will be interesting to see how they service the australians with classes yes (laughs) i could tell yeah um (laughs) throw another peloton on the barbie (laughs) new content so we have a new class type we do yeah um so dj john michael and Anna Greenberg came together for the first ever Deep House Flow. So it's house music okay. and yoga. Mm, mm, mm. I don't have a sound for yoga. Exactly. Um. Yeah. So it takes 
But you know, it makes sense because like that house music has that kind of like low key yeah, like totally. vibe going on. Yeah. And so then taking yoga, which is relaxing and soothing and putting those two together, I love it. So I think it's a great way to bring um, what DJ John Michael has always done, that kind of club feel mm-hmm. into the yoga studio because they've they've started adding, you know, live DJ runs before it was only rides. And now we have live DJ runs and now we're having yoga. It's pretty cool. So this comes from the clip out group, which mm-hmm. is why you should be in the clip out group. Yes. So you go to facebook.com slash the clip out. And then while you're there from the page, you can get to the group or you can just search the clip out group. There's so many ways on Facebook. But uh, someone posted this and it, it was from the Christine Dierkele page right yes, but we had permission they, yes. they had permission to share and i assume since they put it in our group we also had permission to yeah. share so someone had i what bought a bike they bought a bike and they bought the accessories mm-hmm. and they got these extra things in there and they didn't know what they were yeah and it came from peloton like this isn't like a third party well, right, this yeah. came direct from peloton and come to find out they are mag grips now mag grips can be used on various things there were there was a discussion about this within the group um some people felt that they were used on cable and pulley machines okay so that's strength yes other people felt that they could also be used on rowers no clue if that's true i've never seen anything like that on a rower but um they said that it could i again no knowledge if that's accurate so with all of the upcoming Theories about right. st- the strength di- device, like did somebody device. accidentally throw the, the something in a box too early. I think they might have because, as we know from our clubhouse discussion, we know that uh, people have been invited to uh, check out some things. That is true. So maybe this got sent to the wrong person. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. And, yes. and if you want to see what we're talking about, you can go dig through the Facebook group, or you can check out this segment within this week's episode on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the clip out. Peloton in the news. So an update on Bex Gentry's Olympic journey. Yes, uh, it's uh, it's it's good news and bad news. The bad news is she didn't quite make it to the Tokyo Olympics. The good news is that she shaved five minutes off of her PR. And at the level we're talking about, like five minutes is crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Um, So you might remember back in 2019 when she ran the New York City Marathon for the first time ever. That's when she qualified. She was the first woman to finish, non-elite. And uh, she got a, a... record for herself at two hours and 37 minutes she finished the uh, great britain marathon trials at two hours 32 minutes the cutoff was two hours 29 minutes and 30 seconds so so close i know at that level like a minute and a half is still a lot but um i i just could not be prouder and only one woman that was in her uh trial group passed that day uh and she i just want to point out that her full-time job is in fitness and that's all she does is practice for the olympics and train for the olympics and she she made it and bex gentry almost made it in addition to having a full-time job at Peloton. Yeah. I think that is just so incredible. I could not be prouder of Beck's injury. I know I had nothing to do with it, but I think it's amazing that we have these instructors at this level. You yeah. know, we have Christine, who's been a world champion. Now we have Bex, who just this close to being in the Olympics. Like, just phenomenal instructors. So cool. The New York Post had an article uh, about... Someone uh, unhappy that uh, they're too short to ride their Peloton. And you can tell here because they have the Peloton set at the absolute highest levels. <laughs> yeah, well, right there, she has the handlebars up way too high. Yeah. Um, nothing about it would be considered ergonomic. My understanding is that this woman is uh, four four feet six, and okay. Peloton has a cutoff of four feet 11 inches. But it's interesting because the, the Shorty Tribe has hundreds of members in it that are under four feet 11, and, and many that are four feet six and yeah. have no problem 
riding the bike. Now, um, because she kept asking all these questions about it, Peloton was like, well, you don't fit the requirements, so we're not going to sell you one. So I, I that ended up being the end result. And then she called them out in the New York Post um, and basically was like, you guys need to make bikes that fit everybody and do it for me. But let me just explain that all spin bikes that are made it's the cutoff like it's standard um and every instructor that i've talked to who's a spin instructor says the same thing all spin bikes have a standard of four foot 11 that's the cutoff and people there are kids all the time that are riding bikes that are younger than than that or shorter than that and uh they're they're still able to ride the bike now i will also say peloton doesn't want anybody under the the four foot 11 riding because they don't want you to get hurt and blame them you know that that's something you're choosing to do there's an additional liability aspect if if you ride it against their recommendations yeah and and i will also say i don't like I think it's great to say let's be make everything as accessible as we can for people and I I think that every company should strive to do that. I also think that it's kind of unfair to pick on Peloton because they're the ones that are in the news right now. Yeah. And um and it it's a bad look for her because she is a comedian and a lot of people are coming away from this feeling as if she's doing this for publicity. Now reportedly um she New York Post came to her, which I don't know how they would have known of her story right unless she complained about it publicly but i guess she put it on twitter and so because she was they decided to invite her to be in the story so she's getting a lot of negative response to it yeah and i mean sometimes that's just i mean i deal with that i'm not four six but right. like i can't buy jeans off the rack that fit me right I either gotta get them hemmed or gotta i have to go to like a special jean just people that make jeans for short people right so that's why i was excited when kevin hart was launching his own line of clothes <laughs> i'm like oh that might fit me <laughs> he's your height isn't he i think so <laughs> i think he actually might be a little shorter but, okay but uh clearly he's over 411 because he loves his peloton he does yeah. that he does maybe he's in the shorty tribe too we just don't know <laughs> we just don't know then business insider had uh an article about peloton's head of music gwen riley glenn bethel riley did I get that right? I thought it was just Gwen Riley. Oh, I thought thought there was a Bethel in there somewhere. I don't know. Maybe there is. But uh, okay, so this is Gwen Riley. Okay. And um, this is I thought this was an interesting article because it talks about the new initiative where their Peloton is teaming up with Versus. Okay. And Versus is like this online battle that's done on Instagram. It was started by Swizz Beats. I think it's just pronounced Swiss, but okay. it has Z's in it, so I feel the need to say right. Swizz. Swiss Beats and Timberland. I also feel the need to say Timberland. And um and so he those two put they put this together that they have like these artists go head to head live on Instagram and then like whichever the fans vote for becomes the winner. Okay. Um and so Peloton has made a deal with them, a collaboration. It's a year long deal and they're going to take artists from verses and do the vote live during the Peloton ride. Oh wow. Or run or whatever. It's very cool. So they're 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 Heading this whole thing up They're starting it off this week And it's starting with Brandy Versus Monica Okay And uh, they're going to be Voting And so All you have to do To vote By the way Is put these tags On your leaderboard Whichever one you're voting for And you just have to do that By the end of the month Now how does this Relate to this article Well she's talking about this But she also was talking about How um, Peloton Specifically Has Basically made Their own Record label She says that That Peloton has become A new version Or a new model Of a record label It's like we have Our own little record label Going because We really have to balance All these moving parts To make sure our members Are hearing the best music And having world class Music experience Anywhere And I find that fascinating Because How many times Have you said to me it's just like a music label. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've said radio station. Yes. But yeah, like, I mean, radio stations are format specific. Peloton is not format specific. But, I mean, but it kind of is like a top 40 radio station, but it d- isn't limited to a time frame. But, yeah, I mean, I've said for for years now, I, I guess I could have been there, had a music development. Should have You should have applied. It. You should have applied. Yeah. Now Gwen Riley has the job. And she uh, came from Disney. So okay. you're probably not going to I probably her. would not have won that battle. <laughs> I would not have won that versus. <laughs> <laughs> then Bustle had an article about what happens when you get to your brain when you get a high five. Yeah. You like it. Okay. 
<laughs> uh, scroll down. Okay. Basically, they're talking about how it's more feel-good chemicals for your brain. So all the stuff that you get from exercise, you also get it every time you get a high five. But I got to say, if you get too many high fives or high fives from assholes who won't leave you alone, even though you've taken them off of your profile, then (laughs) it can go the other way. It can be counterproductive. It can. It can indeed. We talked before about how Chase Sapphire is what like kind of reimburses you for your Peloton subscription. And now they have a promotion for cardholders that they can earn five to ten times points on their Peloton purchases. Yes. And uh, there are some people who believe and I believe it was John Mills that wrote this, that he is wondering if they did this specifically in time for the new products that he believes that are going to be launching at Homecoming. Interesting. That would that would make sense. It would because it says uh, up to eighteen hundred like it's like. Accessories and products, $1,800. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That was the number. Yeah. So also, um, we should say, this was not a commercial. That's an actual news story. It is. No one paid us to say all that. Yeah. But Chase, if you want to send us some money, that's cool too. Absolutely. Bustle.com had 10 motivating quotes from Peloton instructors that will inspire you, which is redundant because if it's motivating you, it's inspired you. But anyway... Yeah, and the interesting thing is it didn't like do one liners like I thought they would do. Yeah. So um, I, I mean, they kind of talk about stuff like they're really not quotes. They're it, this is more like direction, the best tips from your instructors. These are not motivating quotes. Um, so instead, I asked everybody what their top ten or their top motivating quotes for, and they were things like Jen Sherman saying, "Just fucking do it." Right. Yeah, like like good stuff. This is not really that. Um, th- this is tips. So I don't know. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's I will say as I was scrolling down, that's not what I was expecting to see. I was expecting to see what you just described. But I think Bustle is just starting to become like they just grab anything and t- talk about Peloton as well. We're getting a lot of those. Yes, I agree. Including it's coming up. Speaking of a lot of those, Parade Magazine chimes in once again with the best insert workout type here <laughs> for Peloton. So best 45 minute Peloton rides for when you're looking to get a solid sweaty workout in. What 45 minute isn't? Right. Yeah. Like, like they all are. Yeah. They all are. Yeah. <laughs> this is just, it's just this silly. Is the third one of these mm-hmm. that they've done. It's been like best 20 minute rides. So it's like. I, clearly, they they see what's driving the clicks over there at Parade. Yeah. Maybe they have some kind of deal with Peloton. I don't know. I don't know. Because Parade normally skews a little older. Mm-hmm. So. Peloton Closet. Step into the Peloton Closet with Tori. So joining us again, once again, via the magic of ZoomTube, is Tori from Peloton Closet. Hello, Tori. Hi, Tom. Hi, Crystal. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How about you? Good. So uh, let's see what is going on in the Peloton closet this week. This week, I would like to talk about shopping resale sites for Peloton apparel that has sold out or is highly desirable. Maybe something that you wanted and missed from the Peloton apparel store. Okay. okay. Well, I know those prices get pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they really do. It, it's incredible. I um, I think you guys know before I was a Peloton rider, I did, you know, the normal, well, the normal um, <laughs> fancy, uh, you know, Soul Cycle and Berries and places like that. And they also have clothing lines. But the level of obsession and desire around those lines versus Peloton, it's like, that's kindergarten and Peloton is grad school. Yeah. It's insane. True story. So, it, it's so interesting because a lot of people have always thought that like, oh, Peloton apparel is not that big of a deal. And I know it's it's certainly increased in popularity in the last couple of years. It's It's gone up quite a bit. But it's always had this very strong grip on the community. It's always been, I must have the new item. It's like trying to get concert tickets. It really is. Yeah. It really is. Well, I I was going to say it's kind of like getting merch from a concert or a festival, except instead of going to that concert once a year or that festival once a year, it's like every six weeks. You're 14 times a year. (laughs) (laughs) Not that she's counting. I mean, that's what Jill Foley said. She said, we commit to 14 drops a year and they have hit that every year since. (laughs) 
It's amazing. It and is. if you have a Peloton apparel habit, that can get really expensive. And also if, you know, it's not as much of an issue now, but in the past, they were really operating on that drop system, which similar to like Supreme or other, you know, very exclusive brands, they produce a small amount, they drop it. If you get it, fabulous. If you don't, you're out of luck. Yep, and yep. then you have to sort of go stock it on secondary markets. And that's what was happening with Peloton merchandise. And there are people who are spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars to get those items that they might have missed from a really, you know, a drop that just sold out really quickly. And maybe they weren't at their computer at that moment in time, that nanosecond when it was available <laughs> in their size. And oftentimes they're buying it for hundreds of dollars used. It's not even brand new. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> I, I have to say, so a lot of this information I have gotten from a friend of mine um, who is really a connoisseur or aficionado of the Peloton merch world, because I am sort of befuddled by the idea of spending literally hundreds of dollars on a used sports bra or leggings. Yeah, that's, yeah. I don't that's know not how I feel happen. about that. It's not, but, um, yeah. You know, there are people who are really into it. And so one of my friends has given me a lot of this information because I just, full disclosure, I'm not that gal that is um, stalking the leopard or cheetah bra on, you know, Facebook Marketplace or on, you know, Poshmark. Yeah. Um, I like new stuff. And that's why I do Peloton Closet because I just like new, 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 new. But um, that's my issue. And um, other people like to get that special item that they missed out on and that's their thing so you know everyone has their thing and well, i wouldn't cool even it. mind buying it used if it weren't so crazy marked up like that's my issue like it's like yeah, it's if not, i really wanted something normally fine. when you're buying something used the trade-off is it's less expensive right. and here it's like right. the trade-off is it's, <laughs> it's out of print so you're gonna pay more yeah it's like we buying should, a comic book but it's it, used no, i was thinking this i was thinking this the whole time this is like comic books yeah <laughs> but a sweaty comic book right. yeah but i would not buy a sweaty comic book <laughs> it's not book. even yeah. in a protective sleeve people right yeah and i was like, and if you're buying it used, but they're telling you they're not going to launder it first, you're on a fetish site. <laughs> that's not a, that's a different away. thing. That's a, the upcharge is for something entirely different. The upcharge oh is gosh. for discharge. I hope we don't have children listening, Tom. I don't think you're so. You're going I, in a direction. We're 200 plus episodes in. Like, they got to know by now. Yeah, you should know. They, okay. they really should. I can go off the rails at any Anytime. minute. Anytime. I'm a loose cannon. <laughs> So, well, to get it back into PG territory, um, <laughs> you can try. So, yeah, my my attempt at least. I talked to my friend Erica about you know who is this uh, Peloton style stalker, and you know I really wanted to take a deeper dive into like what are these pieces that are going for like the big bucks. I actually have a slide. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's yeah. that available. She's like, yeah. let's go, Tom. I was waiting for her to okay. bring the topic up. I don't want to get awesome. out in front of her. Yeah. yeah. So the um, the date when that sort of is the, uh, the the marker of like the really popular hard to get merch is about 2019. So um, these are things that in the Peloton world are known as unicorns. So these are just the really hard to find items. Um, the cheetah bra is going for about $150 right now. Um, and that originally sold for, I don't know exactly how much, but probably something like 50 to 60. Yeah. Um, wow. The Hearts Will Race set is going for about 400 and that's for both pieces. I have and that again, one. Oh, not, well, you're sitting on a gold mine, Crystal. Not by the time this airs, you won't. <laughs> I'm going to the eBay. And it's from the it's the the clip out special. Right. So it's gonna it's gonna go up even more. Owned by the <laughs> clip out crystal. Joking. Who knows what your sweat would go for, Crystal? Ah! <laughs> Zero. And then the Emma Lovewell set, which I think had a, a name, but it's known as the Emma Lovewell set. Yeah, um, I remember that. Now, I'm just curious. Um, so you say that the cheetah bra is going for like 150 bucks. 
are the cheetah leggings like if they are they not sought after or did you just not choose to to i don't think um, they are sought after no it's that cheetah bra why well like why if people want the cheetah why do they like i want my boobs to be cheetahfied but not my legs I don't like the stripes on the on the pants. Maybe that's why. I would think they would just want the whole set. I'm I'm, I'm legitimately asking. I know like, you are. I'm just the, saying I, like, you can wear you boy. can wear a cheetah bra with like so many things. You could wear it with black. Right. You could wear it with a brown. Yeah. You could wear it with like a bright color because cheetah sure. works with that. But like the cheetah's the, almost a neutral. Tom. It really okay. is. Yeah. I know. But then you add those stripes at the bottom and see now you're reducing your neutrality. Okay. That's my theory. But it's got a little stripe there on the back. Yeah, but nobody's paying attention to that. No one's looking at that. (laughs) Now I'm the weirdo for looking at the back of the bra. (laughs) Normally I'm the perv. (laughs) You've redeemed yourself. Yeah, (laughs) one time I'm like, but look at the back of the bra. (laughs) In fact, I just got to say, that Hearts Will Race set, I'm just going off the rails here. My, uh, I actually interviewed Ben and Leanne in person at homecoming whenever we did the 5K race wearing that set. How about that? Yep. That yeah. would get it at least an extra fifty dollars. I think That's so. I think so. Even in the presence of Ben and Leanne, yeah. are you right? Kidding me? I That's- mean, I think I even got a hug from both of them. So like oh. they touched it. That's like an extra hundred, <laughs> right? <laughs> Okay, I'm done. Sorry. <laughs> so, so uh, I, I'm just I'm, I'm still just stunned by by this. So, <laughs> is there a big problem? Do you know with people like the uh, in the in the comic book world? Yeah, you would have to contend with speculators, and they would come in and they would or, you know they would buy five and ten. If it was well, a hot that, book, they'd come yeah. in. And they'd buy, you know, like that we, has been something that has been talked about at least on online forums mm-hmm. about people buying up pieces from the Peloton Apparel store mm-hmm. with the plan to resell it. And um, people are you know angry that uh, everything sells out, and there has been talk or like. Tech posts that you know oh this sold out because someone bought five or ten or whatever with plans to go on to ebay or facebook marketplace or poshmark and just resell so, well yeah. and and i know that after that happened a lot people talked about it a lot i don't know how prevalent it actually was happening but it was definitely talked about as if it was happening every drop yeah. um it was peloton started reducing the quantities that you can buy gotcha. so now there is a limit on con- quantities per purchase however i mean it's not really hard to get around that because it's just by right. e- email address so yeah right I mean, I can have exactly. multiple email addresses. Yeah, I mean, I know in the comic book world, we would have people come in that they, if a book was hot, they'd want to, you know, they'd come and try and buy all of them. And we'd be like, no, no, no. Like, we'd have to leave some for everybody else. Yeah, you and jerk. Get, yeah, and they would be a jerk about it. And yeah, totally. So, I mean, it's, it's like it's, toilet paper in early 2020. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing that you should know is that even though these prices, like, to me, seem really high, 150 for a bra. Yeah. Right now is actually sort of a, a low price time. So um, prices are down for these unicorns. And according to my friend Erica, the expert, there are bras that were going for 300 maybe a year ago that are now down to the reasonable price of 150 that cheetah so, that cheetah bra set that whole set was selling for seven and eight hundred dollars not that yeah. long ago i mean yeah. I, we talked about it on yeah. the show and that was used and that's crazy that's just crazy so it, you are, know there's like bubbles like anything else right. whether it's beanie babies or you know use sports bras i mean people are just into what they're into that's so, so true yeah there's an ebb and flow and at least with a comic book like it might continue to go up in value i just can't imagine this stuff like you're buying it for the moment in 10 years nobody's going to be like i gotta have that peloton cheetah bra right like well, do, the- do clothes do that at all i honestly have no clue things come back well, in style yeah but i mean yeah. in terms of like vi- are, are do clothes are remember there- we had the whole talk about vintage t-shirts yeah i guess that f- the vintage t-shirts feels a little bit more like tied to like the band and whatnot but beyond that do people well, seek out old clothes like yeah there's a huge standpoint. market yeah because people know yes. like they're like that is, like for instance the hearts on fire that was the year that they um they had a very very brief sale and it went to all the stores first it didn't go online which is why it's so sought after because there wasn't that much of it and it was for american heart association month and and it went so fast so like people know that and they're yeah. like oh i want that set and 
I don't remember what the other like the other two sets were like the fall and the spring of that same year. Um, And those things all came out. People were not they know that that's what it's from. And so I don't know if the stuff that's coming out now will be sought after in three years because there's so much more of it. Like to your point, Tori, it's not as. Right. There's not as low of a quantity anymore. But if Peloton keeps adding new members, true, then you're you know true. You, but also Peloton has been re-releasing. Outfits. I was going to say that was going to be yes. my next question. Like, it, yes. do they re-release this stuff? And if so, has it affected the value, or do we have enough data to know that yet? Well, that's I a good question. I don't know if there's enough. There was a very popular set. I think it was called like Sunset yes. Ombre. It was, sunset. It, it was a navy kind of went into like a red and an orange. And sold out, was super popular, and they did, and with Sparkle, don't forget the Sparkle, um, one of and my they favorites. re-released it yeah. pretty recently. I know with, with comic books, if they go, if they do a second printing, then that that's not worth as much money, right? People want the first printing. Yeah, that's so, that's very true. I just, yeah. Want, I'd be curious to see if that would work the same way with clothes, or if people would just go, no, a cheetah bra is a cheetah bra, like I don't care. I don't know. To be determined. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good. He stumped us. <laughs> so if someone's looking to buy this, buy this stuff or go check out the resale market, is there, uh, you mentioned a couple different sites. Is there, is there one of them that's better than the others? The one that um, might be better in terms of a convenience standpoint mm-hmm. is there is a Facebook Peloton apparel. It's called buy, sell, trade. And one thing that's nice is that you can post on there in search of. Okay. So if you're saying, oh, hey, I want the cheetah bra, they do allow you to post what you want. And so that's kind of a nice feature. Otherwise, you're just searching. Right. And um, so, you know, that's it just kind of depends on how much time you have. And do you feel like, you know, going online and looking for that cheetah bra? And then is it a medium or, you know. <laughs> Is it an XXL, which doesn't fit you? And so um, it is nice that some of them do allow you to post what you want instead of just peruse the merchandise and hope that you're going to strike it lucky that day. But a comic book, you know, issue 319 of Batman, they're all the same size. How do speculators know, like, which sizes to stock up on? People who sell a lot start to see. Like, if you spend time on these resale sites, you are going to see that, you know, Larges fly and extra smalls take longer to sell. Like if you are really somebody who's in it to, mm-hmm. to sell and you're, you know, making money off of it, you're probably paying close attention to what goes. Right. And what doesn't. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining us until next week. Where can people find you? I am all over all the different channels, Peloton Closet. So I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram, I have a website, I'm on Reddit, and I'm on the leaderboard at the bottom, all Peloton Closet. Awesome. Instructors in the news. Quick instructor roundup. Yeah, we're just going to hit these real quick. Uh, uh, Cody Rigsby was featured in Yahoo Life. I feel like Cody Rigsby hired a new PR guy. I know he's been everywhere lately, but I think I think part of it is because he has his new Adidas thing going on. Ah. But I don't know. Maybe he did hire somebody new because suddenly he is everywhere. Totally. But this is a whole article. Motivation, affirmations, dream workout, buddy. You can find it all if you get our newsletter and this link will be sent directly to you in your inbox. And then Aditi Shaw was featured on the Claim Cl- Your Crown. Claim Your Crown. Is that like a podcast? Is it- Well, it was a talk on Instagram okay. Live. So I think that this this channel, like I think they do a lot of these with different people. And gotcha. so um, I wouldn't call it a podcast, but I don't know what you like. It's just an Instagram talk. Gotcha. But it's a it's a lengthy one. It's like half hour, 35 minutes. So yeah. If yeah. you want to go check that out on Instagram, it is there waiting for you. And again, we will send you a link so you can find it nice and easy. Perfect. Matt Wilpers was featured in triathlete.com. Yep, and they called him Peloton's resident triathlete. PR Newswire uh, talks about how Hyper Ice. Hyper said, Ice. Hyper Ice. Hyper Ice. Hyper Ice. <laughs> no? No. Hyper Ice Partners. <laughs> Now I'm just going to say it wrong because it's a dumb way to spell it. Uh, (laughs) Partners with Robin Arzan to inspire women worldwide to move better. Yeah. And it's this is a different uh, company that um, 
I believe Alex Toussaint was working with. I can't remember if he still is, but um, but now Robin is working with them. So it's funny because this is another recovery tool. Cody Rigsby is now working with Theragun. So it's like they're all working with different ones now. <laughs> oh, it's like a compression thing. That, yeah. It's the thing that punches you when you're done working out. Yes. Okay. They have lots of different things. It's not just the the gun. Sure. I think they're also the ones that do Norma Tech and they have the leg things. Like remember when we were at Atlantic City and they had people in the booths like laying down using oh, those? Oh, yeah. yeah those. Okay. I think they do those too. And then verywellmind.com. That's a new one. I don't think we've ever talked about them before. Well, it's a podcast. Okay. Uh, they sat down with Kendall Tool. Yeah. And they interviewed her all about um, how to make mental health a top priority, which is great because... Um, Kendall talks about her mental health a lot, and I I really appreciate her transparency on that. So this is, uh, I'm sure, a great interview, and you probably needed to check it out. Peloton Celebrity Sightings. We talked earlier in the show about the uh, Versus collaboration with Peloton, and uh, Ace Showbiz uh, gives us a little bit of background on the Monica and Brandy quote unquote feud. Putting it, that in air quotes. Yeah, exactly. Apparently, there was a fan that thought that the singers were fighting over a man for real with the song. And so uh, Monica cleared up the, the misunderstanding. Uh, she tweeted out, um, I guess the fan said over the weekend, the boy in mine gives me such secondhand embarrassment. Fighting over a man when they're both goddesses makes me sick. Well, Monica caught wind of the post and didn't hesitate to clap back. She said, I think she and I both are more concerned that a 20 years, 20 plus years later, you've still not come to grips with it not being real laughing and crying emojis <laughs> yeah i mean come on it's a, it's a song topic it's like you know I, I thought it was kind of fun since these two are the first uh artists that are being covered in the verses right. it's kind of fun that it also has some some drama i guess you could call it drama yeah it's just like i mean come on like mickey dolan's wasn't really on a train to clarksville <laughs> Like they would get together and sing a song like let's write a song right. about how mad we are. I'm so mad at you. Let's write a song together and <laughs> sing it. In case you missed it. Peloton launched a new strength bracket battle. Yeah, um, we again uh, on Clubhouse this weekend uh, one of our, our listeners um, Matt, I can't remember Matt's last name, but he brought up that perhaps the ride to greatness was kind of thought up from a March Madness perspective right. and we got into a deep conversation about that and then right after we recorded that I saw this post from Peloton, we didn't record it, we just talked about it <laughs> and um, there was a strength bat- bracket which clearly is based on an NCAA right. kind of March Madness type of thing and what they're doing with it is you pick, you vote on your favorite moves like single leg deadlifts versus human makers and then whichever one wins moves to the next bracket and at the end there's going to be a series of moves that are the quote unquote winners and that'll be on Friday and then um, on I think on Sunday maybe oh I don't know but Rebecca Kennedy is going to be doing a special class that's going to feature the moves that you vote for oh okay how cool is that yeah human maker sounds kind of (laughs) dirty I think it's next Friday that the class will be so you can vote um (laughs) I'm getting all my dates mixed up so it starts April 2nd the voting through the weekend and then next Friday after that should be the the Friday 45 with Rebecca Kennedy gotcha and then Sam Yo wrote an essay about uh, stopping Asian hate. He did, yeah. And it's a, it's a, it talks about. It's called the places that I come from. And uh, there's just a little quote here. Uh, I was compelled to write something due to the rise of attacks within the Asian community during the pandemic, while also recognizing that xenophobia and racism is something that has been prevalent within our society for generations. I personally believe that in telling our stories through generational chapters, we can help rewrite the narrative with our collective voices moving forward. Um, and uh, it's it's a very beautiful essay, and I invite you to take the time to go read it. And then on uh, March 31st, uh, Peloton put out a statement in support of International Transgender Day of Visibility. Yeah, it's nice. They had a little statement. We are proud to celebrate and support the entire transgender and non-binary community today and every day. We applaud the courage it takes to live openly and authentically, and you make our community richer for being a part of it. Um, and I also want to point out that it was last year that Peloton added 
non-binary to their gender. So it's male, oh, yeah. female, and non-binary. And then a quick reminder that there are no live yoga classes until the 19th of April. Yes. And uh, this has has spun out all sorts of conspiracy theories. Yeah. So everybody wants to know what's going on. Well, Peloton said right in their statement that they are they're doing some stuff and uh, they're they're giving their yoga studio a break and they're working on some things behind the scenes. So what are they working on? Well, I think it's very interesting timing that we know for a fact that everything kind of moves over from um, that one company. I'm totally pre core. Yeah. Yeah. They they stop selling pre-core um, not long after this, and everything all sales go on on hold. Ah. Also interesting timing is we know that they just bought Aquito and Otari and the other acquisition Atlas Wearables. It makes you wonder if they are filming things in anticipation for ah. big announcements that are coming. Like if they're using a new strength product or if there's something new, right. with, like maybe there's a rower out there now and they can't show us what's going on. So they're filming all this stuff behind the scenes to get ready to be launching it. So um, I think that that is a good theory. Um, and there were also a lot of people that brought up how Otari could be used for things like giving form feedback within yoga and bar. And it's interesting that it's the yoga and bar studio that are going to be closed. Interesting. So, lots to think about and Absolutely. another reason why you should definitely come, come to the clubhouse. <laughs> we should remind people that the virtual half marathon is coming up. Yeah. So a bunch of people from the Bex Beasts group are going to be running with Bex live during a virtual half marathon on April 10th. So we want to make sure that uh, if you're out there, you know, if you need any more information, let me know and I will put you in touch with the ladies that are running this or you can just go over to the Bex Beast and you can find all the posts that are about this and you will get all set up. Uh, there is still time to register and run with the team. And then also we are a sponsor of Peloton for Parkinson's this year. So proud to be a sponsor. Absolutely. Uh, it is a really, really cool event. Um, Peloton for Parkinson's. I believe this is the fourth year that they've been doing it. The event is April 24th. You can ride virtually. You can ride in person. You can do this. In, you can do one ride. You can do all the rides. And uh, they even have a Zoom option this year. They're going to be Zooming together as they ride so that you could ride with everyone. Um, and uh, uh, the th this is just a really really cool event. Eric Tostrid is a wonderful man who is very dedicated to uh, doing everything he can because his mom had Parkinson's and sadly she passed away last year. And uh, if you if you haven't participated in this or you haven't seen the video, I I strongly encourage you to do so. It's a great organization and uh, it's it's just a really cool event and I'm really happy to be part of it. And I know Tom doesn't ride the bike, but John Mills is going to join me that day and we are both going to be riding for Peloton for Parkinson's. So thank you, John, for filling in. <laughs> Peloton birthdays. We've got two birthdays coming up this week. Allie Love on April 6th and a Jennifer Jacobs, who's no longer at Peloton, but she's still one of our instructors yes. uh, in to us April 7th. So back to back. So if you see either of them, tell them happy birthday, but from a social distance. Yes. Checking in with the Peloton community. So uh, joining us today via the magic of Zoom tube is Laura Lambert. Hey, Laura, how's it going? Good guys, how are y'all? Good. We're so happy to have you here. Ooh, we got a y'all. Yeah, we did get a y'all. <laughs> where Where do you live now? If we may New ask, New Hampshire. I live in I live in Charleston, South Carolina. I was close. <laughs> yeah, I was close. Yeah, you're you're very close. <laughs> We're both in the United <laughs> States. She's nice. Right. right. Listen to her play along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do this a little differently than I typically do, because uh, your story has so much to do with how you found Peloton that we're going to kind of start with that, if that's OK with you. Sure. Um, but uh, can, do you mind sharing with us like your your cancer journey and how it all started and how and how that kind of intersects with Peloton? But you can go slow because we'll interrupt with questions. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that, that sounds fine. Um, so I was diagnosed with colorectal cancer in May of 2019. I was 40 years old at the time. 
Um, I have no family history of colon cancer. I have no family history of any cancers at all. Um, so to say that it was a shocking diagnosis, I mean, it, it really was. Um, on top of that, I am a physician uh, and le led a very healthy lifestyle. Um, I've never been overweight. I've worked out three to four times a day. I'm uh, not a day. I'm sorry. Three to four times a week. I'm not that ambitious. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, so I had been having some blood in my stool for about two and a half, three years. I kind of put it off to thinking that I was stressed out, that, you know, maybe it was hemorrhoids. It would come and it would go. It was never consistent. But finally, my doctor said, hey, let's just get a colonoscopy and see what happens. And I said, OK. And I put it off for another year. And finally, when I had it in May, they um, found a 10 centimeter tumor. And uh, uh, my fiance, who's now my husband, fainted when he heard this news. Oh, my God. I was completely shocked. And uh, it was two days before my daughter was to graduate from college. Uh, and oof. so uh, I know it wasn't really great timing, to be honest. I guess when is, uh, so but <laughs> at that point in time, I, I was worried, you know, that she was going to have to start planning my funeral instead of planning on what to do, you know, after college. And so I started my cancer journey in May of 2019, and I'm trying to raise awareness for colorectal cancer now. And I, uh, I know that you told me that March is the month for colorectal cancer uh, awareness. Um, so I, I think that that's great timing, and I'm glad that we're raising awareness. One of the, the questions I had for you is you mentioned that this is like a completely uh, preventative kind of cancer. And I don't, how does that work? Like you just named off like all the things that I think all of us try to do that you were doing. So how is it preventable? Right. And so actually getting screened for colon cancer is supposed to start at the age 45. It was 50 and they've lowered it to 45 because of the incidence of colorectal cancer in people that are, uh, you know, younger than 45. And so um, checking, getting checked, doing a fit test every year, which is checking for blood in your stool at the age of 45 on and then getting a colonoscopy every 10 years is really how you go about preventing it. I mean, finding something early is the way to prevent it. If you have stage one or stage two colon cancer, you have a 95% chance of surviving and doing well. And so catching it early or catching it before it becomes cancer is the main thing. So um, uh, is there like a, 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 a test for checking for blood or is you just kind of take a peek? So <laughs> he you, said delicately. You can, you can check your stool uh, for blood. They have a little card that you can either send in to the doctor every year or they do it while you're on, at your annual exam and they check for blood in your stool and then, you know, getting your colonoscopy every 10 years. Those are the tests. Okay. And so what, what, does, what does treatment and recovery look like? I feel like with every kind of cancer, it's, it's very different. So what did that look like for you? Mm -hmm. So I was diagnosed at stage three uh, colorectal cancer. So it was a little bit more uh, aggressive of treatment. I actually went in the next day after my colonoscopy, I met with my surgeon and I was ready to have it taken out. I was like, let's go. I haven't eaten all day. I'm ready. Bring me into the hospital and let's get this taken out. <laughs> and he's like, it's not that easy. Um, I had to do radiation first. And so I did uh, 28 rounds of radiation. It was daily. Uh, to my pelvic area, uh, specifically aiming at the tumor. And then we took a little bit of a break and then I had surgery and then I had six months of chemotherapy. Wow. Thanks. Wow. Daily. Mm -hmm. How I, I can't even imagine. Were you able to still like go to work and do all the things or how, how, how? <laughs> I still worked and did all the things uh, during radiation and before my surgery and then took a little bit of time off after my surgery and then took some time off during chemo. I worked half time um, just because it was, it, you know, I would do chemotherapy and then I do it once every three weeks. And so I would take a little bit of time off and then go back to work part time and then do it all over again for eight cycles. Wow. Yikes. So if they had caught it in phase one or phase two, how, how different would your treatment have been? 
So for stage one and stage two, you basically just have surgery and, and that's it, um, which is a hell of a lot different than what I went through. Yeah. I don't recommend it at all, which is why I'm you know really trying to push people to get their you know screening colonoscopy starting at age 45. It makes a huge difference. You know, colonoscopies are not fun. It's not great to talk about poop and blood in your stool, but what's worse than a colonoscopy is chemotherapy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I have a question um, and I feel like it's kind of a dumb question. So I apologize up front. But is is colon cancer the same as colon colorectal cancer? Like, are those the same? So they're they're same and different. So colorectal cancer is kind of a catch all of colon and rectal cancer. OK. Colon cancer is treated a little bit differently uh, than rectal cancer. Rectal cancer, you need radiation. So I actually had the tumor that was part in my rectum and part in my colon. And so they treated it as rectal cancer. So you get radiation and then surgery and then chemotherapy, where if you just have colon cancer, you just have the surgery and then radiation or I mean, and chemotherapy. Sorry. I'm sick. Okay, yep. that all makes sense. I, I that makes sense? It does. It does. And I was asking because uh, my my paternal grandmother actually passed away of colon cancer and um and so i'm like listening to all this and i'm like do i need to tell my doctor like do i need to have a conversation about this like i i don't think i have any symptoms of anything but but you know like you didn't have any kind of history and you ended up with it and so it's like it's kind of scary you know right absolutely so they say that if you have a family member that has uh, colon cancer then you need to be screened earlier. So I would definitely use this as an opportunity to talk to your doctor. Great. <laughs> I may have to get I'm screened sorry. before you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's time for me. So like we could get a, see if they got a coupon. Yeah, or two for one special. Yeah, two, two for one. Exactly. You guys could go in together, hold hands. Yeah. I mean, it'd be great. It's a BOGO, except the B stands for butt. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you wish that you had had known before you started going through this process? I, I wish that I had known that colon cancer or colorectal cancer was um, being seen in people younger than age of 45. I'm a doctor and I, I didn't know that. And I think that's what made me dismiss my symptoms for so long. Um, you know, anyone that has blood in their stool, dark stools, changing in their bowel movement habits, weight loss, abdominal pain, those things are are warning signs that something's going on in your body and you need to listen to your body. I thought that I was doing all the right things. I was eating okay. I was healthy. I was working out. And so I thought, you know, why would I even think about, you know, something like cancer? When you think of colon cancer, you think of like old man cancer mm -hmm. i actually named my tumor walter because i felt like that was an old man's name that's amazing um, and, you know, <laughs> once i had my surgery it was like eviction time for walter <laughs> so <laughs> you know i mean it, so it can happen to anyone at any age and so it's really just kind of listening to your body and making sure that you're you know getting screened if you need to get screened and if you have these symptoms well that's good to know. Yeah. I, um, I'm curious also what kind of doctor you are, if you don't mind sharing. Sure. Um, I am trained in internal medicine and pulmonary and critical care. So I do lots of lung stuff. Um, I actually work in an emergency room at the Veterans Hospital in Charleston. Wow. And so, and I love it. I bet that's a really uh, challenging and fulfilling job. Yes, it is both for sure. We've got great stories. Especially right <laughs> now. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes. With um, with COVID, it's been it's been challenging, but I can't even it's imagine been a good experience. Yeah, but thank you guys for the, for being in the trial and you know with the vaccine and everything. Oh, oh yeah, you're welcome. Know. <laughs> hey, I, I, I really looked at it as like that. like ooh, I got the vaccine early yeah. and I didn't have to do anything sketchy to do it. Right? Yeah, like that's, I I didn't so. think about that going in, but I sure am glad about it now because yeah. I in Missouri we're not we're not doing so hot on getting it to people. So um, yeah, right now, in order to get the vaccine in Missouri, uh, you have to prove you voted for the governor. I mean, he's he's not joking. <laughs> he's not joking. Like, yeah, they don't. It's pretty close to that. It's, yeah, they they only setting up vaccination sites right now in 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 districts he won. Yeah, <laughs> so. Good times. Right. <laughs> we Ooh. made the same face. Yeah, yeah, we sure did. We sure did. You know, um, but we won't go down that road. Yeah. Um, here's a here's another question. So now I heard you say you exercised, you were doing all the right things, but like how did mm -hmm. Peloton kind of come into your life throughout all of this? Since you were already working out, what changed? 
So what changed was I was undergoing my six months of chemotherapy and I started getting side effects from the chemo. Um, it got to the point where my hands and my feet started peeling and were really red at the side effects of, of the oral chemotherapy that oh, I was wow. on. And I was having a hard time walking. I would actually see patients. I would roll in a chair from room to room because it hurt so much to put any sort of weight on my feet. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and after Thanksgiving in 2019, my coworker came up to me and he was like, what size shoe do you wear? And I was like, well, I wear a size nine. And he was like, my sister is giving away her Manolo Blahniks because she doesn't like wearing them. And I was like, she's giving them away. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> and he's like, what's your, he's like, what's your address? And so I gave him my address. And then like an hour later, he's like, check your email. And I got an email that said, welcome to Peloton. And this was this whole elaborate plan. My coworkers uh, from the emergency room bought me a Peloton <gasps> so that I could continue to work out. I know I cried ugly Aww. tears. I mean, I was <laughs> ugly crying. It was so wonderful for them to to think of me, you know, because I, I loved working out. I wanted to be consistent during my chemo treatment and it just wasn't happening. I couldn't walk on the treadmill. And so they bought me a Peloton and that's kind of how my my journey began. Oh. And, and that's a great story. But was part of you still bummed that you didn't get the fancy shoes the shoes yeah oh, i was i was a little i was a little upset about that you're like i'm super grateful but now I, don't misunderstand <laughs> but come on man those shoes are pretty sweet exactly but now i get to buy like different shoes for the bike and yeah. all of the peloton clothes and so i think it you know makes up for it you can take the money you would have spent on the bike and buy one pair of shoes <laughs> from <laughs> she might be able to get two okay <laughs> Maybe if I'm lucky. Yeah, I know. Them. Yeah, I mean, it was. They were so generous. I couldn't. I couldn't believe it. So wow. that's kind of how I how I came to Peloton. And I don't think that I would have, you know, really been into it if if it hadn't have happened like that. Wow. So now that you have the Peloton, what? So how has it changed? Like what you were doing for workouts? Because obviously you probably got a lot healthier after you stopped having to do chemo. So what? What? do you love it? Are you glad you got it? And how, what's Peloton like for you? I absolutely love it. I work out about 90 minutes a day on the Peloton doing rides and strength classes uh, and a little bit of meditation and a little bit of yoga mixed in. Uh, it helped that I worked from home for a little bit when chemotherapy ended and COVID started. Uh, just trying to be safe and, you know, not being exposed to the virus was really important for me of and, course. and my bosses let me work from home. So I was able to work out a lot, which was wonderful. And I hit a thousand rides before my year mark of having wow. uh, the Peloton just because I just kept on doing it and I loved it. That's incredible. Yeah, that's a lot. So how does it, how does a doctor work from home if you see patients and stuff? Did it become telemedicine or what happened there? It it becomes telemedicine. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's yeah. like a win win for everybody involved. I think. Yes, absolutely. And you get to you know see patients and still help them out. Um, there's a lot of interesting stories coming from my coworkers about the things that they saw. But for me, everyone was closed and wasn't driving and you know awake and alert and having <laughs> conversations with me on the phone. And it, it was nice. It was still nice to be able to use my skills and be able to take care of the vets. Oh, that's wonderful. And you didn't have to wear a mask because you were at home. That's, that's <laughs> right. I wear them 10 hours a day now. A day is, <laughs> oh, so. my gosh. And are you wearing the, the N95s or the KN95s? I'm wearing the N95s. Oh. We have plenty of stock, which is nice at, at our VA. Yeah. It is, but I know 10 those hours are, of those. That's because they're so tight. They're so tight. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. to. I have like permanent marks yeah. right through here. I have to wear them when I do when I staff the COVID testing facility when I'm standing out there in the parking lot. But that's only for you know an hour and a half, two hours, and it and it's brutal. I can't imagine wearing it for ten. So thank you, yeah. thank you for doing all that you do, and thank you for taking good care of the vets. We really appreciate that. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. They're a great bunch of people. I do get called uh, Sweetie more than I get called Doctor. Um, and my ni my nickname is Doctor Sweetie, but I, I roll with it. It's okay. You're probably like, you can call me Sweetie, but if you call me Nurse, 
I will end you. <laughs> yeah, that, that happens a lot, too. That's okay, though. I'm, I'm okay with that. Oh, you are a very nice you person. You are very patient. <laughs> <laughs> so, given that March is Correctal Awareness Month, is there anything that the community can do to help the cause? Is there anything they, they should be doing? Just any kind of education? You know, I, I think the main thing is if you have a colon, you can get colon cancer. And I really want to, you know, I hope that what I'm saying today maybe resonates with someone saying, oh, you're, you're 45, it's time to get your colonoscopy. Or, oh, you're having symptoms, let's go in and get checked. Uh, I think that uh, awareness is a, a really big thing with this disease um, and being proactive is really important. Definitely. And, uh, mm-hmm. and and back to Peloton. So like with the timing of everything, did you get to do any kind of Peloton events? Did you get to meet anybody in person? I feel like no, because no. of ha- like between going through what you were going through and then the world kind of shut down. There really hasn't probably been an opportunity. I know that there's like a there's a Carolinas group, uh, Peloton Carolinas group, and uh, they're pro- they're really active. Are you part of that community? Mm-mm, I'm not. So I was in chemo from, you know, September of 2019 until March of 2020. And that's when all of, you know, COVID hit. Oh, and so I've kind of been stuck and haven't really gone anywhere. Never got to do any rides up in New York, which I really wanted to do. But maybe one day. I mean, and if, if not, then that's fine, too. I'm just kind of anxiously waiting for things to open up. We've got to get people vaccinated and you know, things that got to slow down. Yeah, boy, that has I'm to be, patiently waiting. That has to be super frustrating that you're like going through this recovery process and you're like, right as things are wrapping up, like then the whole world shuts down and you're just like, well, shit. <laughs> yeah. And, and I actually got married right before I had my surgery. And so we haven't been on a honeymoon yet. Uh-huh. And so I owe, I owe that to my husband. He's been absolutely wonderful through this process and very supportive. Um, not really supportive about the Peloton because he doesn't ride it, but that's okay. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no, Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you guys would get along yeah. very well. Uh, oh, she married a nerd. I owe him, I, yeah. <laughs> but I owe him a trip, so it, you know I'm I'm ready for things to to slow down a little bit. I bet. Well, do you have like a favorite instructor that you like to take classes with? So I'm in the Cody Robin. Day group where I think that you know you're either in one group or another group, yep. and so those those are my go-to people. Um, I also love Jess, and I love the bike boot camps, and I do a lot of like outdoor walking my dog, and so I like to listen to her like outdoor classes. Oh, that's great! What a great way to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And did you? I assumed you mm-hmm. meant Jess Sims in that regard yeah okay yeah i love like justine too there's sure. nothing there's nothing wrong with her she's sure. from south carolina so i love me some south carolina i didn't know she was from south carolina that's funny i just mm-hmm. i had never even mm-hmm. noticed that that's great yeah i think she grew up in myrtle beach so we call it dirty myrtle <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, what is your leaderboard name and how did you come up with it? My leaderboard name is very unoriginal. It's Laura L79. Okay. Um, when I got my 1000th ride, it was with Cody and he's like, Laurel L79. <laughs> I was like, that's me, but not really, but it's me. <laughs> I've, I've had the name forever, so I just never, you know, I'm very unoriginal. I it guess counts. you can't really go with Dr. Laura. That's been taken. It has. Yeah, yep, that's been but, taken. Mm-hmm. But uh, you you know what? You'd probably get a, you'd probably get a lot of shout outs if you changed your leaderboard name to Dr. Sweetie. Oh, Dr. Sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. I've never thought of that. That's a great idea. Because <laughs> that would be fun to say. Yeah. I bet you would get tons of shout outs with Dr. Sweetie. Mm-hmm. That's true. Well, you can change yeah. it anytime. <laughs> <laughs> she's con- she's thinking about it. I know. It. She I is. Tell. I know. She's like, oh, <laughs> that's, you think you'll be on to something. Every once in a while, I have a good idea. No, that's a great idea. idea. <laughs> no, that's, a, that's fantastic. I'd never thought about that. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so uh, do you have any advice for people who are just now entering the world of Peloton? I think that I, the advice is the advice that everyone gives is, you know, do it consistently, 
try out lots of instructors and see who fits for you. I think this year I've, I've taken quite a lot of rides. And so this year I'm going to kind of branch out and maybe once or twice a week, try someone different. You know, I don't usually ride with the UK people or the Germany people and maybe start doing rides with them. Um, and, you know, because you get into a rut mm-hmm. and sure. um, it, it's not a horrible rut, but it's, it's always nice to branch out and kind of see what else is out there. I did a Christine ride the other day that I absolutely love. She did a pop ride and she was like, I never do pop rides. But here it is. And it, it was great. And so it's always good to, to branch out and see what else is out there. That's excellent advice. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. I feel like, do we owe you a copay? Do we pay on the way out? <laughs> is it we see the, see the nurse? I, I usually charge my friends bottles of wine whenever they okay. need like a, you know, a script called in or a renew of their medicine. So wine would be perfect. That's okay. We can do know. that. We can do that. We will. We will yeah, just, just send it to Dr. Sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I should on the way out give it to Nurse Sweetie and then she would <laughs> get to, wait. That would be like you're married or something, or sisters. I don't know or siblings. It could be a boy nurse. That's, that's true. Yeah, that's so. true. <laughs> So awesome. Well, bef- before we go, uh, uh, I guess uh, let people know where they can find you on social media if you would like to be found. Now, you're a doctor. Maybe you don't want to be found. That's I know fair. sometimes doctors are like, no. <laughs> no, I don't mind being found as long as you guys don't mind me posting about Peloton and COVID because those are my big things right now. Um, I'm on Instagram. It's LauraL79. Again, very original. Might change it to Dr. Sweetie. <laughs> And then uh, on Facebook, it's Laura Lambert. Awesome. And if you're going to change it to Dr. Sweetie, you should do it before this airs or someone will steal it. That's from you. true. That's, That's true. true. <laughs> yeah. So you have to think you got a couple weeks to think about it yep. but just before you make the big decision. But, you know, just kick that around. Definitely. <laughs> okay. I'll keep that in mind. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for the time today and uh, walking through all this and educating us and. Now I guess I need to call my doctor, so that'll be fun. Yeah, I'm going. I should be going back in about six weeks, so I'm sure that he'll. <sighs> yep, you're he'll fifty. Yeah, and I'll, I'll I'll stay on you guys and make sure that it happens. So. Oh yay! <laughs> <laughs> no wine for you. <laughs> totally get it. Until we come out the other side safe, and then you'll be like, okay, send her some wine. <laughs> I would. I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> thank, well, thank you very much for joining us today. We we greatly appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it too. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. Thanks. Bye. Bye. So I guess that brings this episode to a close. Uh, what, pray tell, do you have in store for people next week? It's Kelly Backus. As I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, I confirmed it is her. And uh, I want you guys to, I want you to watch the YouTube video because you need to see her cat. The cat, the cat makes a very, very <laughs> strong appearance. Yes. And, uh, and when I say strong appearance, I mean like physically strong. <laughs> <laughs> I think the cat took over the interview. A little bit. Stole the show. Yes. <laughs> we so, had so much fun talking to Kelly. So uh, until next week, where can people find you? People can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Crystal D. O'Keefe. They can find me on Instagram, Twitter, the bike, and of course the tread at Clip Out Crystal. And you can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. Find the show online, facebook.com slash the clip out while you're there. Like the page join the group and wherever you get in your podcast from be sure and subscribe so you never miss an episode so that's it for this one thanks for tuning in and until next time keep peddling